Hello and welcome to our Advent Bunting Tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be sharing with you how to create bunting that you can use as an Advent calendar where you've got little pockets that you can place treats and Advent sweets. So let's get started. Start by collecting the materials and the supplies that you're going to need to create the Advent bunting. You're going to need some fabric, we decided to work with a lightweight upholstery fabric and a cotton and we chose a fabric for the main part of the bunting and a fabric for the pocket but it's truly up to you and your design. You will need some bias binding of some description. You may also wish to embroider on the number of the day onto your advent bunting and we decided to do that with an embroidery thread. However you're welcome to do it by hand with an embroidery thread or simply sew it on the machine using a plique, and perhaps then some bond web might be useful. But we'll discuss the options you have with that later on in the tutorial. You will need to download the template for either the square or the triangle or both of the bunting pieces from our website, or you can design your own. And I'll put a link to that in the description box below. Then I would recommend collecting up some pins and a needle, some scissors, and a ruler and a pencil so that we're ready to get started. So collect your supplies, join me back here and we can get started. Now whether you are deciding to create the rectangle or the triangle pennants, the same rules will apply. You're going to need to position the template and I would recommend that you draw it out in card because it will be easier to use onto the wrong side of the fabric and you're going to draw around it using a pencil or chalk. Now make sure that you position it onto your fabric so that the pattern is going in the correct direction and so that it's sitting centrally on the pattern. Now there are no seam allowances included on any of the pattern pieces. So we're going to need to add seam allowances and I would recommend that you work with a quarter of an inch which is five millimeters for ease. Using a ruler and pencil or chalk draw one quarter of an inch five millimeters as a seam allowance around the drawn template. The same rules apply whether you're working with the rectangle or the triangle. Cut out the shape around the outside drawn line which is the seam allowance that you added. Now I've gone ahead and I cut out two in my exterior bunting fabric because you will need two of either the triangle or the rectangle shape for every pennant that you wish to create. Now the number of pennants that you wish to create will depend on what you're making the bunting for. If you're following this as an advent calendar bunting, you may wish to make 24 or you may wish to make 25. So I've cut out the two larger sized rectangles following the same process of drawing around my template and adding on the seam allowance of, of a quarter of an inch, five millimeters. Now you also will need to do the same for the smaller square or rectangle and this is for the pocket to sit onto the bunting. I did exactly the same with this and I decided to use a different fabric to the exterior fabric for my bunting but I drew around the template and then I cut it, I added the seam allowances of a quarter of an inch, five millimeters and then I cut it out. So what size are these templates? Well you obviously can download them from our website but if you would prefer I will give you the measurements for them. So the large rectangle for the exterior of the bunting has a measurement of 8 inches in height, which is 20 centimetres, and 5 inches in width, which is 12 centimetres. Now the smaller rectangle or square piece is for the pocket, and this has a measurement of 5 inches in width, which is 12 centimetres and four and three quarter inches in height, which is again 12 centimeters. Had you preferred to create the triangle, you will need to download the triangle pattern pieces 
Again, I will give you the measurements for them now. So the exterior fabric for the triangle has a height of eight inches, which is 20 centimeters. And the top of the triangle has a width of seven and a half inches, which is 19 centimeters. Now for the pockets on the triangle, you will simply need to measure up from the point of the triangle four and three quarter inches or 12 centimeters and draw a line across and then you can trace out your pocket for the triangle pattern. If you were creating the triangle, you would have done exactly the same thing. In your exterior fabric, you would have needed two pieces. You would have traced them onto the wrong side of the fabric and added a seam allowances of a quarter of an inch, five millimeters. And exactly the same for this smaller triangle used as the pocket. It's up to you whether you wish to do just triangles and or just rectangles or whether you wish to alternate them. We're planning on alternating triangle then rectangle throughout the sequence. Before we go any further, I would recommend that you complete the embroidery or the implique of your number onto the pocket fabric of the bunting. Now, if you're planning on hand sewing, you can hand sew them at a later stage, but if you're wanting to applique them on the sewing machine, you will need to complete it now. So what are your options for this? Well, we decided to hand sew them using embroidery thread, and we divided the embroidery thread into three threads and completed a little feather stitch. I will put a link to the tutorial on how to sew a feather stitch in the description box below. However, you could also use a back stitch. We have a tutorial on sewing this too. And again, I will put a link to that in the description box below. However, if hand sewing isn't your thing, you have a couple of other options. One option would be to simply cut out the shape of the number in some other fabric and stick that on using some iron-on bondweb. Alternatively, you could stick it onto your fabric using the iron-on bondweb and then actually sew it on the sewing machine for a really professional finish. And there are a number of different options for sewing this. You could use a satin stitch, a zigzag stitch, or a standard stitch. Again, we have a tutorial that will show you from the process of ironing on the bond web to the three different applique stitches that I mentioned. I'll put a link to that in the description box below. If you are planning on using the applique method, you may need to interface the wrong side of your pocketing fabric just to support the fabric when it's going through the sewing machine. If you're planning on hand stitching the letter like we did here, I would recommend that you draw it on with a removable pen and then you can get on with completing your embroidery or you can complete the applique that I mentioned previously. I'm going to let you do that now and then we can come back here and start sewing the pennants together. Now I've completed a feather stitch, but you would have completed your applique or whatever you plan to do for your number section on the advent bunting. Now we're going to need to finish along the top edge of this smaller piece, whether you're working with the rectangle or the triangle, the same rules apply. On the wrong side, with the wrong side facing up, you're going to need to turn under along the top edge one quarter of an inch, which is five millimeters, and give it a press. Now you're simply going to need to do the same again. So again, turn over a quarter of an inch, five millimeters, and again, give it a press. Once you have pressed down the top edge twice, you can take some pins and you can position some pins in as we're going to take this to the sewing machine to sew. Now you're going to want to complete an edge stitch close to the folded edge on the wrong side of your square, rectangle or triangle, whatever you're working with. I'm going to stitch one eighth or three millimeters away from the folded edge and I'm going to start with a back stitch. Again, I'm using the guide on my sewing machine so that I know that I'm being accurate with my one eighth, three millimeters. I'm feeding this folded edge into a little nook on my foot there. And I'm going to stitch this all the way along. 
And as I said, the same will apply whether you're working with the rectangle or the triangle. When you get to the other end, you're going to backstitch. Now you've stitched the top edge of your small piece of the rectangle or the triangle, I would trim your threads and you can give that a nice little press if you would like to. Now we're going to create the sandwich to actually sew the bunting together. Now you need to position one piece of your rectangle or triangle right side facing up with the pocket on top. This is how it will look from the front when you are finished. Then you're going to position the other piece of your rectangle or triangle with the right side facing down on top of your two layers of what will be the front, so your exterior fabric and your pocket. I'm going to position that right side facing down to make a sandwich, okay? Now we're going to need to take some pins and we're going to pin in the drawn line and that should go through the drawn line on all of the sides. And you're going to work your way around pinning the lines together. Now you're going to join me at the sewing machine once you've done that. And we're going to be sewing from the top edge along the drawn line, turning the corner at the bottom and sewing back up so we will not be sewing across the top edge here. And you will need to do the same process for all of the pennants that you'll wish to create. Now we're going to be sewing down the side seam, joining the pennants together. You should have two of your exterior fabric and one of your pocket fabric in the sandwich. You want a back stitch to start and you, want, you should be sewing along the drawn line, which you would have completed when you cut out your pieces. And that should be a quarter of an inch, five millimeters from the edge. And we're going to simply sew all the way down, following along the line, taking the pins out as you go. Now, when you get to the bottom corner, we're going to need to position the needle exactly into the corner for accuracy here. So if you're worried using the foot pedal that you're going to sew too far, what I would recommend that you do is to use the ham wheel, turn the ham wheel towards you, and you should be able to walk a couple of stitches forwards so that you finish in the right place. Once you're happy with that the placement of your needle is on the line that you drew, you can lift up the foot here and turn your work. If you look when you get to this point and you're not correctly on the line, then you would simply turn your work back, sew another stitch or go backwards a stitch. If you needed to go backwards a stitch, all you would do is use the ham wheel and turn the wheel away from you. Now I'm going to stitch along the bottom edge of the pennant. I will turn the corner the same at the other side and I will stitch back to the top edge. You do not need to stitch the top edge. The same rule applies if you're working with a triangle. You'll need to sew down one side, turn at the bottom of the triangle and back up the other side. Once you've sewn around the pennant, you're then going to trim the seam allowances down to about half of what they currently are. That should be about one eighth, three millimeters and you're going to complete that for all of the areas that you've sewn. So for the rectangle, that will be the two sides and the bottom, and for the triangle, that will be simply the two sides. You will also need to trim off the corners, and by that, I mean just cut off the corner. You want to leave a couple of millimeters and about a sixteenth of an inch before the stitching, you don't want to go too close to the stitching, but obviously this isn't going to be taking too much wear and tear. If you plan to be filling your pennants with lots and lots of things, it's maybe quite heavy, then perhaps I would recommend doing a smaller stitch length. We completed a 2.5 millimeter stitch length for this, which is a standard stitch length, but if you were going to be adding a lot of heavy 
items into the pockets, I would recommend working with a 1.5 millimeter stitch length. So you've got two corners to cut for the rectangle and one corner to cut on the triangle. Then we're going to turn it around to the right side. Make sure that you poke out any of the corners so that you get a really nice finish. And then we're going to go to the iron so that we can give this a nice press. Make sure that you give all of the pennants a nice press and that the seam is sitting nicely on the side. Now you need to think about the order of your pennants. Now you may have decided to embroider or applique a number onto them, so that will be really easy. You just need to lay them out in the correct order on a table or a surface. Now you're going to need to take some bias binding and we're going to be working with this to attach them together along the top edge. Now before you start pinning the pennants into the bias binding, you're going to need to measure a small amount for you to be able to actually tie them up. Now we decided that this would be 15 and a half inches, which is 38 centimeters. However, if you require more or less length, you're welcome to do that. Now at the start of the bias binding, you're going to want to turn under about half an inch, one centimeter, and then you'll simply fold the binding in half, tucking away all of the sort of nasty ends. And then you can place some pins along the edges of the binding. So we're simply folding it in half and pinning. To position the bunting into the bias binding, you're simply going to position the bunting, the raw edge of the pennant or the bunting, about halfway into your bias strip. And then you're going to wrap the bias around the bunting. And it should be ideally the same on either side. When you position a pin through on this side, you should be picking it up on the other side in the same place. And you're going to work your way along pinning the pennants into the bias binding. Now, to join one pennant to the next pennant, it's up to you whether you want to have a gap between the pennants. However, we decided that we wanted to have them touching. So in the bias, again, on the wrong side of the bias, I'm going to position my pennant with the raw edge about halfway into the bias binding, and I'm going to let them touch here. And then I will wrap my bias around. and place some pins in and you'll work the whole way along doing this. So when sewing the binding, you're going to start right at the edge. You will need to put your needle in and the foot down so that you can take the first pin out, trying to keep all of the little seam allowances in between the two layers of your bias binding. Now you're going to back stitch, so to secure to start. So a couple of stitches forwards, a couple of stitches backwards, and we're working our way along, stitching one eighth, three millimeters away from the folded edge of the bias. And you really want to try and make sure that these are sitting nice on top of one another, or if anything, the front one sitting ever so slightly over the back so that you don't see the back one from the front. You're going to work your way along and we're starting by stitching the long sort of end that you're going to use to actually hang up your bunting when you're finished. Now you're starting to get on to sewing the pennants and you're going to continue doing the same thing. You'll remove the pins as you sew and you're still sewing one eighth, three millimetres from the edge of the bias binding. And I'm just using a small little nook in my foot to help me accurate, be accurate with that. Take the pins out as I go, and I'm simply moving my way along. And I'm sewing with a straight stitch, 2.5 millimeter length, so standard length. And if you find that at the joins, my pennant is sort of creeped out here, just going to get that back in to make sure that I don't 
so that any different need to the rest of the pennant. And you're going to work your way along the whole length of your bunting doing this. And ideally, if you'd pin this correctly, you should find that your stitches actually go through at the same point on the bias binding on the other side. But if they're not, I promise it will come with practice. Don't worry. And there you have it. You want to trim any threads and you may want to give it a little bit of a press. You should have your pennants all sewn on with your bias binding. And now you can simply go away and hang your beautiful advent calendar and use the little pockets to display gifts and such like. Thanks for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial.